Savati Club. My name is Mike the Man and this is for entertainment purposes only because I don't know anything. If you are watching alien videos, uh, some of these, you know, half truth videos, uh, this will not do you any good. You know, you will not benefit at all from any what I say because I always find it interesting how actually a lot of people state hmm interesting series well if you watch me you will realize I don't just come up with series I actually prove what is so that's why for many years people say so where do we come from and I say well I know very close I'm getting closer what you want me to do you want me to make something up you know um, and also the questions that, yeah, it's really disgust. I'm, re I'm, I'm totally disgusted, to be honest. I'm, half of me, this is part of me is like, I'm, watch, I'm doing these videos, I'm thinking like, who cares? You know what I mean? But uh, it's about facts. It's about finding facts. And all I want to do is find more facts. But I need you guys to at least, you know, well, do what you want. This is for the good people. I've talked a lot about the Aryans, the Sarmatians, you know, Silesia, the region of Poland that was going back and forth between Germany and Poland for many centuries. <coughs> There's a lot of Silesian ancestry there. Um, you go a little bit from that region into the Czech Republic, there are many old Celtic villages. And the uh, thing is that, you know, the Celtic, um, well, the, um, the Scythians were not considered Celtic, I guess. But I need to know actually a little bit more about their haplotypes. Yeah, it's, it, it's really weird that I haven't looked up a lot of these things and I think the reason is probably that I was, huh, the Samar <clears throat> I don't even know why. So what I also, <clears throat> I'm trying to find right now is a statement <clears throat> about Neanderthal DNA among the Samara, among the Kavlinsk, and among the Yamnaya. And it's been suggested that the percentage of Neanderthal DNA has gone way down from way back then. Let's see the Iceman, for example. Um, he had something like 10% Neanderthal DNA. But none of this explains the original origin of the Proto-Basques because they were not R1B. And that's where it becomes very difficult <clears throat> because their ancestry is more from the Caucasus, maybe Eastern Mediterranean. Um, they were later invaded by the Yamnaya people. For three, 4,000 years, they lived peacefully by the Pyrenees and they went west. So, of course, there are idiots who say, well, it's all an Atlantic thing. They're all from Atlantis. Yeah. No. Migrations show the origin of much of their Y-DNA is the Caucasus region. Like Georgia. Not the state in America. The country. Georgia. And what happened was they just migrated. You know? I talk about the psychology of things, I talk about health, mental health, I talk about predispositions. I often talk about the majority of people in this world settles for job, for spouse, for place to live, for, you know, it's a settle, settle, it's a plan B. We are a plan B society. And if you're living your plan A, people sit there with their mouth open or they become jealous and just hate you. 
you know they hate your plan a success so they want you to suffer with them in the b region and <clears throat> i often wonder what are the percentages of the people who stayed behind the rh negative frequency versus the percentages of rh negatives that left the region because they said enough is enough we want to find somewhere better and back then the world population was extremely low there wasn't really much um, you know by the way pleasant climates seem to be like plenty of oxygen supply and pleasant climates seem to be what was a part of helping our ancestors thrive so we didn't need the RH protein to supply oxygen to rid our bodies of CO2 toxins you know ammon ammonia sort of type of substances and these people they migrated to the west maybe seven eight thousand years ago and they migrated how far until the ocean stopped them this game they went all the way to that region of the Pyrenees Spain France and maybe a little bit further but the ocean was there and they realized that's it this is as far as we can go and they were not R1B and it was G2A and I2A mainly it was a Y DNA and we also have to realize that the percentage of mtDNAK went down from something like 24% to 4% over you know a long period of time but what happened and why the original K which is very interesting because that is the ancient Hebrew female line now three or four thousand years later they were invaded by the Yamnayas so these warrior men were not peaceful and I just saw a study that it just primarily was the men that took over Europe not the females so they came in and they basically uh, bottlenecked the men out of there and replaced all the whole Y DNA to where now you have you know maybe my question is this before the Yamnaya invasion what were the percentages of RH negatives among the proto Basques among the original were they even higher were they lower were they about the same you see that's why it's for me not so easy to say you know the Yamnaya brought it all over because we have still the original Basques the original Europeans if you will you know now when it comes to the Vikings a lot of you believe that the Vikings were high in RH negative blood I am not so sure you see it is much higher in the south of Scandinavia due to the uh, slave women the Celtic slave women that were brought over so we have the Celtic tribes and the Basque people with these high percentages of RH negatives overall Europe as a whole well you know more than Africa or Asia but still it's really not that extremely high so the question is how did those migrations come about what happened how did they take place 